Welcome everyone to our second event of the summer career series. Um, we're going to wait a minute or so before we begin, but as you come into the event, if you could please complete the five question event attendance form um, that is also in the chat. Once you complete that attendance form, we'll be sending you follow up materials from this event. Also, please mute your microphone um, during the presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat and questions will be answered at the end of our presentation. And then do know that this event is also being recorded and it will be posted to the dream.us YouTube channel um, within about 24 hours. So. And then also, this is a great networking opportunity. Carla, if you could click, please. So also feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. So state your name, what university you're from, your major. Also feel free to include your LinkedIn URL if you want to connect with other scholars and alumni across the country. Next slide, please. So briefly, why are we doing the summer career series? We have four events during the month of this July, and we are doing these to inform you of your career options and what's possible. Regardless of whether you have work authorization or not, you can earn an income, have a meaningful career, and make a living. As you can see on this slide, there's a number of entrepreneurial career opportunities for anyone, regardless of work authorization status, such as becoming an independent contractor, starting a business, freelancing, workers' co-ops. Some of these things we will be covering during our summer career series events. And did you know that over 823,000 undocumented entrepreneurs are in the US and are thriving in their business? Some of them include the Dream.us alumni and scholars, and some examples that some of our alumni and scholars um, are doing as part of their own business or becoming entrepreneurs, are starting their own sustainable clothing line, uh, having a makeup or a photography uh, business, doing bookkeeping and payroll, um, and so forth. So we know that our scholars are uh, thriving as being entrepreneurs, and we know that you can also thrive in becoming an entrepreneur as a career option yourself while in school and or after graduation. Next slide, please. So briefly, wanted to share out the rest of our summer career series. Today, we will be talking about developing an entrepreneurial mindset. And then after today, we have three other events in our career series. So next week on Thursday, we will be having an Undocu Entrepreneur panel made up of four the Dream.us scholars and alumni that are going to be talking about their own business why they decided to start their own business, what their business is in, tips they have for other scholars interested in becoming an entrepreneur. So that's happening next Thursday. Then we have two other events later on in this month. On Tuesday, July 26th, we'll have a professor from UNLV come in and talk about ITINs and EINs. What are they and how do I get one? Um, ITINs and EINs are very important for um, individuals to legally earn income, as well as start their own business or do independent contract work. So that will be on Tuesday, July 26th. And then lastly, Thursday, July 29th, we will have Yadi Ortez from Pre-Health Dreamers talk about healthcare income generation options. So for those of you that are interested in healthcare-related 
uh, career options or generation income generation options, I encourage you to attend that session at the end of the month. So with that, I will go ahead and turn it over to our presenter for today, Carla Reyes. And Carla is um, the founder of DreamCo Institute. She spoke at our first session earlier this week, and we're excited to have her back in today to talk about developing an entrepreneurial mindset. So thank you, Carla, for being with us and take it from here. Thank you so much, Nicole. I am so excited to be back um, sharing more of what um, I'm passionate about in entrepreneurship and just self-employment, you being able to earn income when you graduate from college and just uh, sharing a little bit about my journey and what you can do, like some steps that you can take in order to get to where you want to be in your career. So thank you to those of you who are back um, and for those that are new, um, you know, just I, I hope that you can take something and um, from this presentation and take action. So that's like my goal for every presentation that I do. That's like always my goal. Like, can you it's not just information it's something that you can actually do. So I'm going to take um, make, uh, I'm going to take questions at the end. I'm going to go through this presentation. I want to make sure to cover everything. But I also want to take some time to answer your questions, so we'll do that at the end. Um, you can also feel free to put them in the chat as so that you don't forget your questions. I know sometimes that happens. So I'm going to be talking about an entrepreneurial mindset. And this concept is, you know, it can be so many different things, but I actually am presenting it in the with the frame of reference of me as an undocumented, as a formerly undocumented person, student, and also um, just in my work with undocumented students and undocumented entrepreneurs, what does it take for an undocumented individual to create and have an entrepreneurial mindset and foster that? So that's, I, I just wanted to start by saying that. Um, welcome. And a little bit about myself, I'm Carla. Um, I am a trainer, a business advisor, and professional coach, um, and the CEO uh, of Dreamco Institute, Dreamco Marketing and Consulting, and I'm also starting um, a social media marketing and web design company, and that's launching this year. Um, I'm formally undocumented, and I am uh, also former former DACA recipient. Uh, I didn't get legal residency until 2019 and it was uh, through marriage my husband and I got married and he petitioned for me and that's how I was able to receive um, a green card. I was born in Mexico City. I was raised in San Jose, California and I've been living in California since I was nine. Um, I attended community college after high school and um, state university and then I went on to earn my MBA at Mills College in um, Oakland, California. I also have worked with different colleges, universities, nonprofits, and small businesses. And I find that my work with individuals with, through my coaching uh, business has been extremely rewarding as well. So I've gotten an opportunity to work at different levels and different organizations. Um, most of it has been as a, as a consultant, contractor, business owner, coach, not as an employee, but I have worked as an employee uh, in different organizations, um, in, in, in administration, in different organizations. Uh, my first workshop for undocumented uh, students was in 2007. And so that was around the time that I learned that entrepreneurship was a very viable option for a lot of us who were undocumented. And when I learned the process of how to open up a business, how to formalize a business, how to sell services, I created a workshop that I went around um, colleges in California to, to, to share the information, basically what I'm doing, what I'm doing right now. And, um, and I would go around and just like do workshops like this and encourage people to, to, to start their own businesses. I want to say that this, what I'm going to share is not legal advice and it's for informational purposes only. This information is also, you know, anecdotal from you know, my experience and um, you know, research that I've done. 
So what we're going to do today is first, we're going to define what an entrepreneurial mindset is. Then we're going to learn five skills that develop an entrepreneurial mindset. And many of you actually already have many of these skills. We're going to do a little bit of an, a self-assessment. So I think that's something that's extremely important as you as you uh, grow in your career and as you develop this entrepreneurial mindset, you wanna be able to assess where you're at and um, how to ask for help. So we're also gonna learn five ways to train yourself to have an entrepreneurial mindset, okay? And I'm gonna share some resources with you um, that I, I have found useful and just like for the reading so that you can um, actually have, you know, not just this presentation, but also like, you know, be able to follow up on um, building the entrepreneurial mindset that is going to be key in your success uh, as, a, as you build your career beyond uh, your formal education. So what is it? What is an entrepreneurial mindset? And there's so many different definitions out there. But when we think of an entrepreneurial mindset, we think of a set of skills that are going to enable you to do these three things. One, identify and maximize opportunities. Two, overcome and learn from setbacks. Three, succeed in a variety of settings. And so as many of you know and have experienced, um, we each one of these um, things we actually have to think about and, and it's a very present, um, you know, it's very present in our lives due to our undocumented status or maybe some of us are the first in our family to go to college. There's just like so many different ways in which we're gonna need to overcome setbacks. We're gonna need to figure out how to be successful in so many different settings. Like I, um, you know, I even just being, you know, at home and at school, like these are two completely different settings. Maybe even, you know, as you start um, gaining mentors, that setting is gonna be different. Uh, I know for me, for example, going to college as the first person in my family to go to college, I didn't really know how to be ready and prepared to go, right? And so um, also being in a, living in a place where there was such a diverse uh, community, it was also one of those um, experiences that were very formative. And having an entrepreneurial mindset to be able to do these things was definitely key in me being able to be successful in meeting my goals. So what are the five traits of an entrepreneurial mindset? As an undocumented student um, that has an entrepreneurial mindset, you're going to have these things. And I can almost guarantee that all of you, in some level, you already have all of these traits, okay? It's just a matter of fostering it. So number one, you're probably highly resourceful, okay? So you, so you also take initiative. I mean, the, the mere fact that you're in college shows that you found the resources to be able to go to college, right? You took initiative to apply. And because that is a, that is a, a process and it can be a very extensive one. You, you took a calculated risk. Um, you have high levels of self-esteem or some levels of self-esteem. Self I find that there's always room for improvement and you're a good communicator. Now, when we think about each one of these, and I'm gonna go into detail in, uh, for each one of these, because I find that the, the, the students um, and individuals that I've worked with or undocumented and were successful in their career had were very um, focused consciously and sometimes not very consciously on, on each one of these things, okay? And so somebody that's, that is highly resourceful is somebody who, who has the ability to find quick and clever ways to overcome difficulties. Okay, so it's, it's those, those of you who don't get stuck in one place just because there is a challenge. And those of you who come in, for example, and ask more questions about like, how do I start my business, right? You're trying to, you, maybe you don't fully understand what the next steps are beyond college, but you try to figure it out, right? Um, that's being highly resourceful. So some examples of that is applying for scholarships to pay for your education when there's no financial aid available. I know that you are logging in from different states. And so some states have financial aid av available, other states don't. Um, you know, you got it, you have a scholarship, but at the same time, maybe it doesn't cover all of your expenses. So you're trying to figure out ways to actually be able to pay and continue your education. That's being resourceful. Going to tutoring, therapy, the dentist, the doctor, when you need help or care, 
And we don't always think of that as somebody who's resourceful, but you, you tend to solve problems, right? Like whether they're for you, sometimes even for your family, you're a resourceful person. And so you want to be able to acknowledge that and foster that like as much as possible to be able to be successful in your career. And also exploring other options. And I already mentioned this work options as you wait for immigration reform to happen. Right. Um, and so you don't get stuck there thinking like, well, I'm not going to be able to get a job until, you know, DACA is extended or my DACA is renewed. You, you go out there and you search for other resources. And so I want you to take a moment and think about from a scale from one to 10. So one being not at all to 10 being extremely, how resourceful are you? Okay. And so you again, one of the one of the biggest um, challenges sometimes is to to have the time to actually acknowledge where we need to work on, and where you know what areas of our uh, of our skill set or of our toolbox we we need to work on. But this is a skill that is also going to be helping you um, be successful in your career because then you're going to be able to identify where you need help. Um, the second the second thing is that you take initiative, okay? Somebody who it has an entrepreneurial mindset, especially as an undocumented student, you someone who, who takes initiative. So this is the ability to assess and initiate things independently. In the, in the last workshop, I actually talked about, you know, just start something. And, and I say this because a lot of the times we, and I have found this both in my career and working with undocumented students that oftentimes we, uh, may see, we may not have opportunities just coming our way, the way other um, folks who don't have the immigration barrier may have, right? Like the opportunity to just be like, oh, look, at I got, I got a job posting. Somebody's thinking for me for a job. Sometimes that's not going to happen because a lot of people don't fully know or understand how to work um, with undocumented students. So what will happen is that you're going to need to take initiative, right? So, and you're already doing this by being the first one in your family to do X, Y, and Z, whether it's go to college or move out of state or go live on your own, right? Like there's so many different things where you're already taking initiative or you're thinking about taking initiative. So you already have the skill. And what I'm saying is that you need to, um, you need to reinforce that and continue to take initiative because that's going to help you in your career. You may have started some sort of organization, a dreamer club, an engineering club, a design drama club at your school. You might have started uh, um, you know, a, an organization that didn't exist before. You sometimes maybe step in when someone needs help. So taking that initiative is going to help you. And the earlier you start doing that, the better. And I'll tell you one example of that. So, um, so when you are thinking about, okay, what am I going to do after college as a career option? And how do I develop the skills that I need in order to be successful in my career, given this barrier that I have, you want to think about what you have control over. And maybe sometimes that might be pitching an idea to different organizations that you would want to work for as somebody who's coming in to provide services. And I'm working with a UC Berkeley student right now that is going to be doing that. And he actually started, um, we, we started our coaching um, uh, or late last year. And by three months later, he already had a contract with an organization providing services because he was going out there to tell, he was telling people, hey, I'm starting this, I'm interested in working here. But most of the time, these opportunities are not gonna come to you. Um, you have to go seek them out. And this is why taking initiative is gonna be extremely important when, um, when developing that entrepreneurial mindset. So from a scale from one to 10, how often do you take initiative? Okay. Great. Thank you everyone for sharing. Wonderful. And, and it's okay to say, you know what, maybe I'm at a three or a four, or I rarely do, you know, and that's okay, because then at least you acknowledge that you're there and that you need to do more of that. You need to just practice it, right? 
most of us are not born with these abilities or skills. We just develop them, okay? The same way we learned a new language, right? The same way uh, maybe we are learning our native language. I know that that might be the case for, for some of us where we, you know, it was easier to learn English and Spanish, but we took initiative and said, you know what, I really want to understand my language, in my case, it's Spanish. And I, I can tell you that I didn't really speak sp Spanish that well when I was in college or even when I graduated from college. It wasn't until I learned uh, from one of my coworkers who had studied in Mexico um, that my Spanish was pretty bad and that she was going to teach me. So she taught me. And so we don't, we just learn these skills. These are skills that we can definitely learn, okay? So you also take calculated risks. And I think this is one of those topics that are rarely taught in school. They're rarely taught, um, you know, I, at least in my household, this was not something that was taught. But I think this is one of those skills that are extremely important. And so what is taking a calculated risk? A risk that you consider that is worth taking because the result, if it is successful, will be very good, okay? So it's not just about, you know, going for it blindly. That's not what it means. And when I talk about, you know, starting something new, um, whether it's like starting a business or starting an organization at your school or, or pitching your idea to different organizations and just like, you know, offering services, it, it doesn't mean just go at it blindly, right? It means take a calculator, think about what the reward is going to be and what um, the consequences are if it doesn't, if it doesn't work out, right? And so some examples of that is our parents, right? Or whoever maybe brought you here, in my case, it was my, my mom, took a calculated risk when they brought me to the US, right? When she thought about, you know, what the risk versus the reward was, she, she said it would be worth it, right? And so attending school instead of going to work, I know that in my work with college students, sometimes that's a really difficult decision to make because maybe our families are struggling and we want to help them out. But, um, you know, but we decide, okay, me, you know, going to school and finishing this degree is going to be worth it. Like, this is a risk I'm willing to take to not go to work right now and not get a, you know, um, get paid under the table. Like for a lot of us, that's the only option or, you know, or just maybe go to work with our parents, you know? And, and, and so instead of doing that, going to school, that is a calculated risk. So you're already doing this. Also driving, traveling, living day-to-day -day life as an undocumented person is a calculated risk, right? And so we do this all the time. Now, the way that I think about it to be able to be successful in your career you want to think about, okay, so if I, for example, invest these $3,000 that I've worked really hard to save to be able to do, you know, to build my website or to buy the equipment for my business or to buy the camera, is it going to be worth it, right? And so you, it, and, and, and whether or not the risk is going to be worth it is actually up to you because everybody's different. I have had clients in my um, business advising uh, business and in coaching that have said, we have sold our house or, or refinanced our house to be able to open up this store, right? And every time that I hear something like that, oh, my heart sinks, right? Because I'm like, that is, that is a lot of risk, right? You're risking your house um, because not all businesses are going to be successful. But this person took a calculated risk. Their amount of risk that they're willing to take is actually more than mine, I guess, in, in that way. So everybody's different in this way. So I want you to think about how often do you take calculated risks? So this is not doing things out of like, out of a whim, but you actually think about, okay, this is going to, I, I believe this is going to work because of these reasons. And I'm willing to take that risk. So is it never? Because that's also, you know, an option. Like you might be the kind of person who never takes risks to always, or you might be the kind of person who's always taking calculated risks. So how often do you take calculated risks? Great. Great. Wonderful. 
Thank you for sharing. This is, this is amazing. I mean, that self-awareness is so important, right? And so when you think about your career, right? When you think about your career, when you think about your education, or even, for example, switching majors, right? Like maybe some of you are like in the middle of a big decision you want to make or buying a car or um, marrying someone. Like there's so many decisions in your life. You want to be able to be the kind of person who takes calculated risk. And all of us have met people or have people in our family who just like risk it all. Like they're kind of like are able to do that kind of thing. And so it's a skill. And this is something that I learned in, in, in business school. So I, I can almost guarantee that most other majors do not teach any of this. And there's actually equations that you can use to take calculator risk, which businesses do all, use all the time. But this is something that I would say as an undocumented student, you need to learn how to do this. You are already doing it. You need to become you know very, um, very good at it. The other thing is, um, having high levels of self-esteem, and I'll share in a, in, a, in, a, in a few slides, I'll share a little bit more about why this is important, but having high levels of self-esteem is a frame of mind that's gonna let you celebrate your strengths, challenge your weaknesses, and feel good about yourself and your life. And sometimes that's gonna be really difficult, right? Like when we watch TV, I know the the uh, four years of a certain presidency were really hard on a lot of us and, and even might have, um, have had, uh, you know, a challenge, ch might have challenged our self-esteem and, and have us look at our life differently. And the media can do that in so many different ways, right? But also when we think about how we practice and how we gain high levels of self-esteem, it might be one of those, um, how would we say, like it, it, it's one of those skills that are going to be lifelong and are going to be extremely important to be able to advance not only in our career, but also in our, in our life in general. And, um, and so some of those ways that you are already doing, um, that you're already practicing it is by not internalizing or believing anti-immigrant rhetoric, right? Even, even if you see it on TV, even if you hear it on the radio, I know for, for a fact that maybe even some of your colleagues or classmates might say things that might be hurtful and, and, and you have to not internalize or believe it about yourself, right? I had um, one instance where somebody that was very well-intentioned um, hired, they, so the college that I was at actually hired somebody to write a story about me because this, this person, so it was an administrator, he was really um, inspired by my story. So he wanted to get, get a, a, the, med, um, the public relations person at the college to write about me. And in her story, she actually called me an illegal immigrant. And it was a really hard, difficult thing for me to process because one, I didn't believe that about myself, but I also couldn't believe that in my safe space in this college, I had, I'd been called that because I had never been called that directly in any other place. And so these situations unfortunately happen. And so this is why building a high level of self-esteem is extremely important right? Like it doesn't mean we don't care and it doesn't hurt us. It just means I believe that I'm not that, per what, what that person called me. And then also, um, you know, I believe other things about myself. And so also you, you just don't want to internalize that, especially because as we go out and seek opportunities, you just never know who you're going to encounter. So always having a practice to be able to build your self-esteem is going to be important as, as a, to strengthen your entrepreneurial mindset. And we hear the stories of, you know, how many people were told no. And, um, you know, and I'm thinking about so many authors, so many um, actors, like how many times they have to go up on stage and, and do an audition. And then they, you know, they get told no. Um, some of them get, you know, like they're just like, it's the stories that are out there and sometimes they're going to happen to us. So that's why we need to be able to be very, very mindful of our self-esteem. The other thing is that having high levels of self-esteem also means making time for different, as different aspects of your life and growth. That includes relationships, right? Money, your physical health, your spiritual health, whatever all of that means to you. So it's not just about achievement. 
So your self-esteem cannot be tied to your, to your money or to your degree, right? Or to your accomplishments. It has to be tied to so, you know, different aspects of your life and also what you believe about yourself. And I, I think this is very important because in, in my work, both with students, but also in my personal life, I have gone through, I went through that experience where I really felt like my academic achievements were, were the most important thing in my life, right? Or my, my career. And then I realized that that wasn't necessarily the case. And I didn't know how to really have healthy relationships, how to take care of my money or my physical health. And it's something that I'm learning now after actually graduating, where I felt like I had the time and the bandwidth to do that. And I've seen even within our undocumented um, student organizing, organizer entrepreneur space that there are definitely a lot, of, a lot of room for improvement for focusing on other things that are not just about education and entrepreneurship or making money. So I just, I, I feel like this is one of the most important things that you could take away from this presentation. You wanna be able to, have a holistic life because you're entitled to that. That is your right as a human being, okay? Regardless of whether or not you have DACA or you don't or a social security, any of that, this is your right. And this is going to help you in your career because people wanna work with people who have self-respect, self-esteem and are, you know, experience joy and happiness. So you also wanna take pride in your accomplishments. And, and communicate those well, right? Via your portfolio, your resume, your website. And we live in a world that is very public. So you wanna be able to communicate your accomplishments. And I get this a lot. Like whenever I work with, uh, with uh, Coachee, where they say, uh, they write their resume, but their resume is just like, when I first see it, I'm like, you did, but, you, but okay, so what did you accomplish? And they've accomplished amazing, beautiful things for community except that they don't know how to communicate this, right? And so it's definitely having that, um, having that pride to say, this is what I did for this organization, whether it was paid or not, like this is what I, what I created, right? So you wanna be able to take pride. So um, from a scale from one to 10, one being very low to 10 being very high, how would you rate your self-esteem right now? Great. Thank you for sharing. Yes. I mean, I see some, some nines. I see some sevens. I also see some twos and threes. And, you know, I think that depending on where you are in life, for sure, like sometimes there's been times where I have definitely felt like a two or a three, and I'm like, I really need to work on this. Like, this is something that I, I need to work on because sometimes it, it sometimes it come across it comes across in our um, in our work, right? In our interactions with our relationships, and so it's really important to take care of this. And I'll share with you. I recently had um, one of my um, one of one of the students that I'm I'm coaching right now. She is such a high achiever. Oh my goodness. Like she has done amazing things. And at the same time, she doesn't necessarily recognize her achievements and doesn't feel, you know, so good about them. And I, you know, and I think it's, it doesn't have like, again, it doesn't have to do with like your grades, your GPA, all of that. It, it, it's more about how holistic your life is. So there's a lot of really great um, resources. And I encourage you to like really take some time to be able to address that if you feel like that's something you need to work on, okay? Also, someone who has an entrepreneurial mindset is also a good communicator, okay? And this means conveying your message thoroughly and clearly while being receptive to the audience. So understanding your audience and conveying those messages clearly, right? And many of you actually already have had um, 
experience with this because you're managing two different languages, right? Like communicating in two cultures, two languages. So you already know that you have to shift between the two. At least in my case, that was definitely the case. You know, my parents didn't speak English and then at school, like everybody spoke English and it was just like a completely different world, right? Also presenting information in an educational setting, you probably already had to do presentations um, in front of your classmates, in front of your professors or, uh, and learning how to communicate with mentors, professors and, and peers. So you already have that practice. I would say that a lot of the times um, whenever I work with students and even with myself, I think sometimes we don't practice it enough and we don't, and, and, it, and this is everything. It doesn't just have to do with like verbal uh, communication. It has to do with our visual communication, right? Like nonverbal, like the way we move our body, the way that we dress, the way that we address other people, um, the way we write an email, like all of these um, skills, I mean, the skill of communication and all of these modes of communication are definitely going to support our entrepreneurial mindset or not. And I would say that this is one of those um, skills that actually could impact your bottom line, meaning your money, right? Like if you're a good communicator, you're gonna be have more opportunities for earning money. You're gonna have more opportunities for, um, for working with the organizations you wanna work with. So this is going to be one of those skills that you definitely are going to get a return on your investment financially and much more um, satisfaction out of your career and life in general. So I think if you could ever take any classes, any training uh, from in communication, in any kind of communication, I think it's totally going to be worth it. But somebody with an entrepreneurial mindset is really focused on building relationships based on great communication. Okay. So from a scale from one to 10, how would you rate your verbal, nonverbal, written, and visual communication? So just in general, how good of a communicator are you? Great. That's wonderful. Great. And just as a side note, if you um, spoke another language at home or, you know, I would say it is totally worth practicing, right? Like I feel like there's definitely, I didn't start actually practicing until I was 29. I was out of um, the MBA program and I just would hear myself speak in Spanish because we were serving Spanish speaking community. And I had people, <laughs> say, hey, we can't understand what you're saying. And so I, I didn't take it offensively. I was able to take that feedback and be like, I want to improve. Like, I want to improve on that. I want to be, I want to be a great communicator in both languages. And it's taken me years. Like I listen to podcasts in Spanish. I write um, in Spanish and I, I, you know, I just, I practice it. It just takes a lot of practice. Okay, so I would encourage you to take pride in that and the fact that you might be bilingual, trilingual. Um, and, and if you, you know, want to learn a third, fourth language, I mean, it's, I think it's definitely one of those things where you, you want to be able to have um, that experience. Okay, so, um, so I want to go really quick. Yes, I did that too, Carlos. I, I mix both languages. And my daughter now, she speaks Spanglish because my husband's Spanish is not as great as mine. Um, and, and so she speaks Spanglish, but at the very least, she understands what we're saying and she practices it. It's very important to me that she learns it. So anyway, so five ways to train yourself to have an entrepreneurial mindset. So these are things that you can do, like right after this workshop is finished, you can go ahead and do any of these five things and you're on your way to build that entrepreneurial mindset. Number one, read, watch, listen to stories about people that inspire you. And here's the thing, sometimes it's easy to say, but you know what, that person wasn't undocumented. That person didn't leave their country 
and hasn't seen their family in a long time, but you would be surprised how many challenges other people have gone through, right? And it, and it's not to compare hardship, but it's more to not feel alone and not and, and understand that all of us have a story that includes some challenges. And and some and, and sometimes you'll find inspiration in that, right? Like I'm I'm actually um, listening on Audible to um, Ellie Wong's Dear Girls, her book, right? And she talks about going, I mean, she just, she, and I don't know if any of you know who Ellie Wong is. I'll, she's a comedian. And, um, and so she's sharing all of he, these stories. They're funny. But she also talks about, you know, how many shows she would have to do at night in order to get practice, right? And there was times where nobody would laugh at all at any of her jokes, right? And I'm just thinking like standing in front of a crowd, wanting to be a comedian, wanting to be successful and nobody's laughing at your jokes like, oh my goodness, like that sounds terrifying, right? So, so when you think about what people have had to go through, and of course it doesn't compare to some of our stories, but at the same time, we don't want to compare, but you are gonna, you're going to see how other people's stories are going to inspire you to, to, to spark you, no spark, give you that spark to actually get to the next level. Okay. And I have found that with so many different ways, just read, watch, and listen to stories of people that inspire you and inspiration might come from unlikely places, right? Like I remember when I was in high school, my friend, my best friend's dad, he, and I didn't even know his dad, but my, my best friend would tell me about how his dad used to sell blankets at the flea market. And then he opened up a warehouse, like he didn't even speak English, he had no papers, but then suddenly he like, you know, his business was growing and then he had other people selling more blankets and then he had more people selling more blankets. So he opened a ware up a, a warehouse. By the time we graduated um, high school and we stayed in touch in college, his dad actually owned the property, the warehouse was, was at, like the entire probably block, which I thought was amazing. and. And, you know, and so he was like from Guadalajara and, you know, Mexican. And my friend didn't even speak Spanish at this point. It was just like this amazing story of a person I didn't even know, but I felt like it was inspiring, right? Television shows where women had a lot of financial independence. That inspired me to be financially independent because at that time, I didn't know anybody that was a woman and was financially independent, right? The business case studies while in college, like I remember reading about Beyonce and like her business model. And, and I remember reading about um, Starbucks. I mean, I found inspired, I was inspired by their story. And even my own clients, every day I feel like I'm inspired by just listening to people's stories and struggles. I, I don't internalize them, but at the same time, I think like, wow, like this person really believes in themselves. And I'm inspired by that. Number two, learn how to reframe your own story and how to speak about your own story in a way that is inspiring. Okay, and empowering to yourself. I had to reframe my story because in college, well, basically anywhere I would go in while I was in living in San Jose, I would there were these people with with their with their um, clipboards wanting to take my signature, right? Like there was always all of these political like policies that needed to be signed, but passed or put on a ballot, and they needed signatures. And they, for some reason, I feel like everybody would always ask me, "Are you a citizen?" And I like, that was a triggering question for me. And then one day I was like, to answer that question, yes, I am a citizen. I am not a citizen of the United States, but I am a Mexican citizen. I have citizenship. And it, honestly, before that, I had never even thought about that. I was like, I do have citizenship. I am a Mexican citizen, right? If I wanted to, I could vote in Mexican elections. And by this time, I've already lived in two countries. So I started thinking about that part of my story. And I realized that I actually did have citizenship and that I could answer that question as yes. And then I started saying yes, but I'm not a US citizen. And then I felt better about it, right? The other thing is, was that I stopped calling myself an undocumented worker or an undocumented X, Y, and Z. And I started saying, I am a business owner and a marketing professional, right? I am, uh, I own a business and my parents are entrepreneurs, right? Because they had to be, I mean, they, they couldn't get a job. So they started their businesses. So three, take action on your ideas. Like don't just leave your ideas there. Take action, 
The worst thing that could happen is you don't want to do it anymore. You fail and then you move on to the next thing. Okay, but you need to have this practice in order to actually be successful at something. You will have to pitch your ideas and create opportunities for yourself. And this is why starting is so important, right? Because then you'll have something to show for, you know, all of this education that you're getting. And, and that's really just like that practice. Num number four, learn to believe in yourself and self-promote. This means that you have accomplishments and you believe in yourself and you're comfortable talking about these accomplishments, right? And, and I know many of us in our culture were raised to be humble. And sometimes we can be confused being humble with, with not promoting ourselves and not getting ourselves out there. I have, through my coaching practice and, and working with, with, actually, it's not even just undocumented students. But like, you know, women of color, just like people in general who were not taught to ask for a raise, to not ask for more money, to not negotiate, we always cut ourselves short and we leave money on, and opportunities on the table because we don't know how to, how to self-promote. Maybe we really believe in ourselves, but we don't know how to speak about ourselves and really acknowledge that we deserve more. And this is why we have so many um, so we leave so many, so many opportunities on the table, including financial opportunities. Um, and just to wrap up, I have three examples of, of folks that I know dearly that have started their own businesses. So I have Ileana, and I mentioned her in the last um, presentation as well, who started Legendary Staffing in La Hacienda Restaurant. She's, she's, uh, she's a um, business owner, property owner, and she um, you know, she's documented and, um, and I, and, you know, because she's a business owner, even if DACA was to go away, she would still own all of these things and all of these businesses and create jobs. She, um, and then also there's Eric at UC Berkeley. He's the owner of Golden Bookkeeping Services. He's the, he's the student that I started working with at the end of last year. He um, got his first contract within, I think it was like three or four months of our work together. And Juan, Juan wanted to do work as a professor. And he, so he studied at UC Santa Cruz. He wanted to work as a professor. And so he created a business um, so that he could work with students. And sometimes it's not going to be just your, you know, that specific job that you're going to get. But if you want, if you create an opportunity that allows you to be in an educational setting in the case of Juan, right? Um, it's, it's rewarding. You make money, you can earn a living, you can raise a family, you can do the things you got to do while immigration reform is still pending. Okay. And number five, learn how to ask for help when you need it, or even when you don't, right? Like learning how to, how to ask for help is a skill, right? And so asking questions, right? Figure, you know, not being afraid of somebody saying no to you if they can't help you. And I'll tell you, I would have never been able to pay for my MBA had it not been for one, I had to humble myself to be able to get um, my community to support me. And so I actually was not able to afford the MBA program. There was no minimal scholarships for MBAs for some reason. And there was also, um, it was very expensive. So I asked, an ex-boyfriend, I asked a mentor, I asked a friend to lend me money. Like I really, it was like some of the most humbling experiences and they helped me. And if it hadn't been for them, I wouldn't have an MBA today. And so um, really asking for help when you need it or even when you don't is an extremely important um, skill to have. So I wanna, I wanna go to your questions. We still have few minutes. So I want to make sure that I answer your questions or any comments that you might have. Okay, question. I have a question. Yes. Ask away. Uh, I notice many entrepreneurs have a set of routines or motto that they live by. So, like, how would you like break bad habits and build good habits? How would you break bad habits and build new habits? Yeah, that's a great question. I would say 
and I, so there are people who need to progressively change their habits, right? So like understanding what your preferred like way of changing your habit, you got to try different things. I will tell you that I'm the kind of person who breaks habits cold turkey. I do better when I'm just like starting tomorrow, I'm not going to do this anymore. And because that's just the way my brain works. Like I just, it's out of the question. I'm not going to do X, Y, and Z, or I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. That's me, right? So you have to have, you have to know yourself. I don't think there's like a one size fits all. There's other people who are better off saying, okay, I'm going to progressively like change this thing that I really want to change. Does that make sense? So I think number one, you have to know yourself and, and what works best for you. And if you've never contemplated this question before, I would say, try it out, right? And I don't think there's anything wrong with going cold turkey or doing the progressively um, changing things and get help. Honestly, I am a big advocate of, of books, like audiobooks or books or resources and things like that. And I can tell you that it took one book that I, I listened to on Audible that it was like my trigger and my support in, 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 in quitting drinking alcohol. Like I just said, I read, I listened to this book and I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to stop drinking tomorrow. Like that was the thing. And, and of course, like it was like my experience and family dynamics and all, all so many different things, but like, I'm a cold Turkey type of person. So I don't know if I answered your question, but I would say, start with learning about yourself. What is the best way for you to do it? ask for help, get the resources. Don't try to do it everything by yourself, but you can definitely like change your habits. Like we definitely have free will to be able to do all of those um, new things we wanna do. Okay. Did I answer your question? Yeah, you did. Thank you. I, I would highly recommend, there's a really good book. It's kind of like the, Yes, I was just going to say, somebody just mentioned it. Atomic Habits by James Clear. Excellent read. Oh my goodness. It is an awesome, awesome read. Yeah. So I would say read that. It's a good one. Okay, let's see some other books, some other questions. So I, what is, uh -huh. go ahead. Sorry about that. I have one last question. Yeah. How did you got to work on building your own self-esteem, like that confidence that you have, how did you manage to actually build that up? Um, so exposure, like I, I'll, I'll, there's a couple of things. One of them is uh, understanding and accepting who I am, right? Like there are, there are things about myself that I used to be very self-conscious about, but then I think as life went on, meaning was as I got older, um, I understood that I, I was my own unique person. And each of you is your own unique person with your own unique gifts. And, and accepting that and understanding that is going to help show up in that same way, right? And I'll tell you, in my early 20s, I struggled a lot because I wanted to be older. I wanted to look professional. I wanted the professional world to accept me. So I would dress, and if you see some pictures of myself, I, I would dress um, like an older professional, like I was 23 and people thought I was like 35, right? And so, and, and but that wasn't really who I was. And so for me, it, it would, took a while. So what I'm trying to say is like, I've, I haven't always been this confident, but I would say that once I started accepting myself, like my loud voice, my tattoos, like my, uh, I, I love saying bad words. I won't say any right now, but like there's these things that I learned to accept myself and surround myself with people who actually accept me for who I am. That's when I started feeling more real confidence, right? So it just comes with experience and really knowing yourself and understanding who you truly are, right? And just forgiving yourself. If there were times when you weren't your best, there's been plenty of times when I haven't been my best for sure. Um, yeah, so let's see. Thank you for asking that. that was a great question. It's a hard question, but it's a great question. Um, so somebody wants to know what is your daily schedule like? Any high performance tips? 
Um, so I don't have that figured out. Um, but I will say that because I've been self-employed for a very, very long time, there are, um, I have like a, a schedule where I'm like, okay, I'm going to work for these three hours. I also can't sit still for very long. So I know for a fact that like I have these three or two hour blocks where I have to get the thing done. Right. So I, I push myself during these short amounts of time. This is another reason, even though I, I now have residency, like I, I don't go out there to look for a job because eight hours a day in one place just isn't something that is my personality. And I've learned to accept that. Right. And so uh, as far as high performance, I am old school. I ha you can't see it, but I have a, an actual like notebook where I write everything like I have to write it down. I use technology, but like if I don't write it down. I'm going to forget. OK, what are some ways to raise funds for your business? Do a prototype and sell it. Try not to get into debt too early in your business. So whatever you're trying to sell, do a prototype do a first version of it and sell it. That's how you get money for your business so that in, and you own your business. I would say start there, but I'm happy to, to share more resources um, to send me an email, which reminds me, I'm gonna share my information in the chat um, so that you have it. And this is my, well, actually here, this is my website, carlareyes.com. And you can find me on Instagram at Carla Reyes MBA. I know I don't have anything posted there, but I will soon. I just honestly haven't had time. I also have a LinkedIn. You can find me on LinkedIn as Carla Reyes Noguera. You can do a search and it's the same picture, Carla Reyes Noguera. Okay. Yeah, this is, these are great questions. Um, how do I start pitching my ideas? Get your materials together. So what you do is you put, you get a solid resume, right? Um, and you draft up an email saying, Hey, like I'm offering these services. I would love to have a conversation with you. Can I take you out for coffee? Right. And so you start building your network and letting people know I am offering, like I just, created, when I was in college, I started my business in 2007. I printed out Canva didn't exist yet. So I, I created a logo for myself. Um, I gave myself a title and I started giving out my business card. And I can tell you that people actually emailed me and called me and they said, hey, do you, um, you know, do you wanna do um, X, Y, and Z? Or like, are you interested? That's how I became a business advisor. Somebody had my business card. The, actual, the director of the Chamber of Commerce had my business card and he called me. He said, hey, do you want to come join the team as a business advisor? I was like, heck yes. But he had my business card. <laughs> so um, great question. Um, how do I feel about online school? Does it take away from meeting people and making connections? No, you have LinkedIn. I mean, still get, you know, as safely as you can, go to networking events, meet people. Um, but I, I mean, I don't think online school is going to stop you from actually building your career because we live in such a technology driven economy and, and professional space. I mean, you have LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, here, let me see if anybody else has any questions. Um, Okay, we have time for one more question. Okay, so and just so you know, folks are are saying are are, are saying that they have this certain amount, of, certain skills that they're offering. Okay, I'm good at drawing and sketching some ideas. What kind of business could I do with my skills? So think about what other people are selling with those ideas. I mean, you could commission art, right? Like you could say, uh, these are, you know, I do sketches and, and, and drawing, like uh, you could get paid to do that. Um, there's websites where you can actually provide um, all of these uh, services, right? Uh, Fiverr might be one of them and, you know, try it out, okay? Wonderful. So these are some resources and you are actually gonna be receiving um, a set, like uh, a three-pager 
with these resources. I would say there's so much information online um, and you know, a, there's a lot of information, so it's not the easiest to digest, but these are some of the ones that I would say definitely look into just for the reading. Um, and so I think somebody's asking, are the services on your website free? No. So the, so I do want to make, yeah, like, so my services are not free. This, I am running a business and I want to practice what I preach. Um, and so, yeah, like reach out to me. I could definitely work with you. Okay. And then, um, yeah, so that's, that's me. Stay in touch, please. So this is all my contact information. Would love for you to stay in touch. I sign up on my website so that you can receive the latest um, resources and information. But I'm very excited for your future. You deserve to have an amazing life and career where you thrive and you feel happy. And um, I want to thank you for taking the time to, to listen to me today. Well, thank you so much, Carla, for joining us again today. We really appreciate your insight and advice. Um, for those of you on the call, also thank you for your time today as well. Remember, we have three upcoming sessions still this month. Our next one is next Thursday. We're going to have a panel of current the Dream.us scholars and alumni who are entrepreneurs themselves. And that is happening at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So hopefully we can see you at the next one. All right, everyone take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.